Sharif says hi. Okay. This morning? Yeah. Oh, okay. I see him all the time. I know. He's fun me to tell you that. Uh, you guys should have picked up two handouts, and both of those handouts together will make up number 49. So let me pause here for a second and see if we're going to do the minute of silence today. Okay, I guess not. Um, all right, so we've got 
what is it like today? And then I guess I'll see y'all three times next week. So four times before Thanksgiving break. So we don't move on to a new pre-calculus topic, um, but we have one more section, one more big section that we have to do this semester. Uh, we don't have enough time to get it in before Thanksgiving, so we will start it when we come back from Thanksgiving. But one of the things you need to be good at for those type of uh, problems is factoring. So our last couple days here before Thanksgiving break, we're gonna do a little bit of factoring practice. Um, a little bit of work on the semester test review so that you won't have that much to do. Um, even if you think you're going to exempt it, that is one of our requirements to exempt the final because we give you class time to work on it. And uh, I feel like there was one other small thing. but So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about a couple of the major factoring types on this front page here. Just a couple of examples so I can remind you of the different type of factoring that you've seen. On the back of that, we're going to start to connect it to trig, because if you can factor algebraic expressions, then you can factor trigonometric expressions. And then I've got 10 practice questions for you to factor. So if you were very good at factoring, this is gonna be a pretty easy landing up until break. And if you know you struggle with factoring, then this is a good opportunity to help you get caught up to speed because you will need this quite a bit when we get to section 5.3. So <clears throat> both of these make up number 49. So the first type we're gonna look at, again, just a couple of examples of each of these. I know you've heard of all of these before. And of course, some of these are more important than others. But the first type is GCF, the greatest common factor. So this is basically undoing the distributive property. You've got to think about the biggest thing that would divide it evenly into all of the terms. So that could be a number like four, but also a variable like p cubed. And then you're undistributing. So if I was to take this times this, it's supposed to give me that. So that lets you think about what is left behind. And the GCF times this needs to give me my second term. So you have to put a plus one there. 4p to the third times 1 gives you 4p to the third. Now, if you don't remember, factoring is just really undoing multiplication. So all throughout your math career, you've been doing that. You learned how to add, and then you learned how to undo it with subtract. You learned how to divide, multiply, and then you learned how to undo it, divide. Well, factoring is really just undoing multiplication. It's just an algebraic way to do that. Okay, so for this one, uh, two terms. So the biggest number that goes into both of those would be a negative six. And the biggest variable that divides into both of those evenly would be an r to the fourth. And again, I always think of this as undistributing because my answer distributed should go back to the original question. So this times this is supposed to give me my first term. So it needs an r. And this times this needs to give me this. And negative 6r to the 4th times 1 is what gives you negative 6r to the 4th. Since factoring is just really undoing multiplication, if you're willing to multiply your answer together, in these cases distribute, then you can make sure that your answer is correct. Okay, there's only one more of these, so I would like you to try this one before we talk about it together. Think about what the GCF is for all three of those terms and just make sure you can factor it out correctly.
Okay, let's look and see how you did here. Now I'm gonna actually start this one off incorrectly because I think even if you're pretty good at factoring, there's something that you could pick up here. So most of your time, if I even gave you enough time there, is thinking about what that GCF is to pull it out. But sometimes it's okay to just say, well, I know five goes into all of those, so maybe five is the GCF. Five is not the GCF, but just bear with me here. If you take out a five, then five times this needs to give me my first term. So that would be 10p cubed. Five times this needs to give me my second term. So that would be 10p squared. And then five times the last part needs to give me negative 20. So even though five is not a GCF, if you struggle finding the greatest common factor, sometimes pulling out some number makes the rest of these numbers get smaller. And then you can see, wait, they also have a two in common. So not only could I pull out a five, I could have also pulled out a two. So let's, this is what you should have been aiming for. guys okay with that GCF ready to move on um, I will say and I can't remember if it was in this class or not but um, I don't know GCF is kind of a weird thing I taught algebra 2 for years and I know GCFs often come pretty easily to you guys especially when you're told take out the GCF you know what the process is and you can do it pretty pretty well um, but if <coughs> this class is not the one that I shared this with the other day this is just some random question we were doing in calculus last week and they had to solve this equation by hand without a calculator and it's very hard for them to see as well but the process was GCF because this big term had a 2x squared plus 4 squared and this term had a 2x plus 4 squared at least squared it had a GCF that could be pulled out front and then the rest of the algebra was was fairly manageable so just because you can do GCF and higher mathematic courses usually it's kind of hard to see but if all of this and all of this have something in common you can factor it out so just trying to give you some bigger picture perspective there okay a second type of factoring a very common one is difference of two squares and this one a lot of people refer to as formula so to know when to use it you need to know what this is saying difference just means subtract two because you have two terms and then they need to be perfect squares so you've got to have something squared here and something squared here if it fits that pattern then it will always factor as the thing being squared here plus the thing being squared there and then uh, a minus as well. One's a plus and one's a minus. So to me, this is a difference of two squares because this is like four n being squared and this is like three being squared and difference because it's subtract. So I just take the thing on the left being squared plus the thing on the right being squared and then the thing on the left being squared minus the thing on the right being squared. And again, factoring is just undoing multiplication. So if you want to take a minute and foil that together, you will see that it goes back to the original question. And then you also need to be careful about ones. One is still one squared, and this is like r squared. So the thing being squared on the left goes here and here. The thing on the right being squared goes here and here. One of them needs to be a plus and one needs to be a minus. Doesn't matter which one is which. But again, that's what you would need to FOIL together in order to come up with 1 minus r squared. So also easy questions, but you have to pick up on the pattern. You have to know, you have to catch when it's the difference of two squares. Sum of two squares, I don't have any examples here because this one does not factor. Something like this 
this is two terms. They're both perfect squares, but because they're being added, there is no way to factor this. So you would either have to just leave it alone, or if you were asked to factor it, you would need to say that it doesn't factor, or even better, say that it's prime. Prime means that it does not factor. And if you think it does factor, you should write down what on your paper what you think it would factor into, multiply your answer together, and you will see that it does not, uh, does not work. Difference of two squares works fine. Sum of two squares does not factor. So it's good to know that so that we don't waste our time on that. Okay, the next to last one, and this one's gonna feed into the last one. The most important type of factoring is trinomials. And I know you guys learned these much different ways, depending on who your Algebra 2 teacher was last year, you probably heard them different methods. Uh, but the method I'm going to show you, and the method I'm gonna insist that you do on your notes, you can practice however you wanna practice, as long as you can do it successfully. But the method I'm gonna show you requires you to know factor by grouping. Do you remember if you did factor by grouping last year or not? You did? Okay. So usually you do, fa well, factor by grouping comes about when you have four terms. So as soon as I see I have one, two, three, four terms, I'm suspicious that this is probably a factor by grouping question. And based on its name, grouping, you should group the first two terms together with parentheses and group the last two terms with parentheses. That's why it's called factor by grouping. Make sure you leave this plus or minus sign in the middle though. A common mistake is that students like to do this and that causes other issues. Leave the plus or minus in the middle. Then it's really GCF three times. So if you can do GCF, you can finish factor by grouping. You look at these two terms and factor out a GCF. You look at these two terms, you factor out a GCF. And then if factor by grouping worked, now this term and this term have something in common. <coughs> they better have this in common, otherwise you did something wrong or it's not really a factor by grouping type of question. So this is a little harder to see, but this is GCF again. This has an N minus two, this has an N minus two, so I can pull an N minus two out front. N minus two times the first part is supposed to give me this. And n minus two times the second part is supposed to give me that. And once again, we are really just undoing multiplication. So if you want to take a minute and FOIL that out, you will see that you, when you FOIL it, you will end up with those four terms. So again, it's really GCF three times, but you have to group the first two terms and group the last two terms, and you have to know when to do it, which is when you have four terms. Now, there is one more catch, um, and it's gonna happen on this question. So, I see four terms, so I would try factor by grouping. So, group the first two and group the last two. Now, this one has a problem that this one does not have. What do you think I'm concerned about between these two? Very good, is this minus sign? Over on here, when I created these parentheses, there is a positive one out here. But when you distribute a positive one, it doesn't change anything. In this question, I put the parentheses, now this negative one is being distributed to these two, and that's not consistent with the original question. When I distribute this to 56y, I get negative 56y, which is fine, that's what the original question says. But when I distribute it to this one, it gives me a minus eight, and the question is supposed to be a plus eight. So if you don't remember this, you should probably write this in words so that you remember this, but when the sign in the middle is a minus, you have to switch just this last sign. That way, if I distribute this negative one here and here, it matches up with the original question. Without changing the sign, we are working a new question, so we're gonna have a different answer. So plus sign in the middle, don't do anything. Minus sign in the middle, you need to swish this last sign so that the question doesn't change. 
But then you can take a GCF out of the left two. You can take a GCF out of the right two. I'm just carrying this minus down. If you did it correctly, these two should be exactly the same. So if you forget to switch to sign, you should get a red flag trying to uh, help you see that something's off. And now this is one big term, and this is one big term. Both of those also have a GCF. They both have a 7y minus 1. So factor it out front. 7y minus 1 times 5x gives me this. And 7y minus 1 distributed to negative 8 gives me all of that. That's how that factors. Now this is a pretty uncommon type of factoring, but I have seen it on ACT practice questions a long time ago. I don't know if they still do it, but again, it's basically just GCF twice, or I'm sorry, three times. GCF once out of here, once out of here, and then once at the end. But you do have to know how to deal with this minus sign. That's really the only real trick to it. Okay, I think I've got one more of those. Okay, I would like you to try this one for a minute before we discuss it. That way, if you're doing something wrong, you can hopefully get it caught. So try that one, and then we'll go over it to make sure you're okay. Then we'll move on to the last type, talk about how this is going to transition into our trig work when we come back from Thanksgiving, and then you'll have the rest of class to do 10 factoring questions. see how you did or at least get you past wherever you were slowing down on. So I know this is factored by grouping or probably factored by grouping because there's four terms. So I'm going to group them. I do have to be careful here. The fact that this is a negative one in front of this parentheses. When I created the parentheses, it's now being distributed. I want it distributed to 21B because the original question said minus 21B. But I don't want it distributed to plus 18 because that would give me a minus 18, which is not consistent with the original question. So when this is a minus sign, you have to change this last sign only. Okay, over here, we need to take out a GCF. And uh, I'm going to take the advice I tried to give you when we did GCF up above. 105 and 90. I'm not super confident. I know what that GCF is, but I know at least a 5 goes into each of those. 5 goes into 105 21 times, and 5 goes into 90, say 18 times. Does that sound right? And now that these numbers are smaller, I can think about if there's something else I could take out. 18 and 21, I could pull out a 3. So if I pulled out another 3, There we go. Now I'm confident. Seven and three have nothing else in common. So 
Again, you don't have to be able to see the GCF from the beginning. Just pull out what you're sure of and then reevaluate. Okay, and then over here, uh, these two have a three in common, which leaves behind a seven B minus three. So remember I had to change the sign. And what I love about factor by grouping is right before you write down your answer, you should know if you're on the right track. These two are supposed to be the same. So if they both have a seven B minus three, factor it out. 7b minus 3 times this is supposed to give me this. So I need a 15a. And then a 7b minus 3 distributed to this is supposed to give me this. So I need a minus 3. Mr. Texas, I got 7b minus 6. 7b minus 6. Oh, right here. How did I make that same mistake over here? Okay. So probably what was happening in my head was I knew these two were supposed to be the same. I thought this was one was right, so I kind of was cheating in my head knowing that this is supposed to be the same. Try not to take that shortcut that I did because otherwise you've got, um, okay, that's okay. Now, one thing about this though that I would have never have guessed at the start of this question, this is typically good enough for when you need factoring, uh, at least in calculus. But if a question says factor completely, which is pretty common, we didn't really factor this completely. Do you see how this has a GCF here, a three? So really the factored completely would have a three factored out of this and make it look like that. Ideally, you could have seen that at the beginning. 105, 90, 21, and 18 all have a three in common. So you could have started off by factoring out the three at the beginning, but Technically, if the question said factor completely, we would need to factor out that three also. But Okay, and then on to the last type. I would say the most important type because these are just the type of questions you're gonna see the most. So these are gonna be trinomials, so three terms. A is not necessarily one. If A is one, it, you can learn some shortcuts and do them a little bit quicker, but realistically, A is not usually one. So I wanna talk about two methods. And again, on your notes, I expect you to copy down the same thing that I'm going over. But if you learned a different method in Algebra 2 that you prefer better and you can do it consistently, correctly, I'm fine with that. You don't have to adapt my new method just because I think it's the better method. However, if you say, I'm having trouble with this one, can you help me? And you show me you're doing the washing machine method or whatever other weird way you guys learn factoring. I don't, I can't keep up with all the different factoring types. There's like at least a dozen. So that would be the limitation here. But the first type, and this is the one you definitely want to practice the most, is guess and check. Ideally, the quickest and most convenient way is to just unfoil this in our head. So I know in FOIL, the first part of FOIL is supposed to give me 3p squared. So I can guess maybe 3p times p. I know the last part of FOIL is supposed to give me negative 5. So I could guess plus 1 and minus 5. That's the guess part of guess and check. But I shouldn't circle this as my answer because it's not the right answer. I need to check it. So I also have to consider the outer part of foil combined with the inner part of foil need to give me negative 2p. And right now, my outer part of foil would be minus 15p. Combine that with the inner part of foil, which would be plus 1p, which would be minus 14p, not negative 2p. So then I have to try something else. So I could, I need this to still be true. I need this to still be true. I could maybe try the minus five here and the plus one here. You just have to try something else. Now the outer part of foil would be three P and the inner part of foil would be minus five P which combines to be minus two P. 
That is what most people, especially as you get older and go into higher math classes, that's what you want to be able to do because it's the quickest. And if you put a little bit of educated thought into your guesses, then um, it can be the easiest as well. But sometimes you can't think of the right number combination. Sometimes it doesn't factor. And you still need to be able to work with this. You can't just say, well, I can't factor this one. What if you have 10 follow-up questions to the factored form? You've got to have a backup plan. So the backup plan is one called the one method that I'm going to show you. Again, you can choose whether to use it or not after we do these three questions. It's called the product sum method. So in the pro I'm going to erase this just to give myself, give myself some space here. But the product sum method, product means multiply, and we have to come up with two numbers that multiply to A times C, where A, B, and C are the same A, B, and C from quadratic formula. So A times C in this question is negative 15. I think I can think of a lot of stuff that multiplies to negative 15. 1 and negative 15, negative 1 and 15, 3 and negative 5, negative 3 and positive 5, I guess that's it. That's my list of things that multiply to A times C. That's the product. But sum means plus, and we need it to add up to the B term, which is negative, let me box these off, which is negative two. So I need to pick out the number combination, there's four to pick from here, that multiply to this, but add up to that. These don't add to negative two, these don't add to negative two, these two do. These are the two special numbers that are gonna make this work out in a nice neat way for you. That doesn't mean, a lot of times students will tune out here and they think, oh, these are the two numbers that are part of the answer. It must be a plus three and a minus five. I would love for that to be the truth, but that doesn't work that way. What these two numbers tell you these are the magic two numbers that you can rewrite the question, leave the A stuff alone, leave it three P squared, leave the C stuff alone, minus five, but we're gonna change the way the B stuff looks. And this is why we need it to add the negative two so that we're not changing the size of the question. Instead of saying minus two of these, I'm gonna use these two numbers. I'm gonna say I have three of them minus five of them. Any other number combination you, work, you pick are going to get stuck here in a second, but positive 3 and negative 5 meet these product sum requirements. Okay, so I did all of that to make the B term look different. Why do you think this might be better than this? for one section, like how we did A, B in the past, where one was normal kids and one was L's. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it'll make the master schedule that way, but that's how it was proposed. So why is this better? Because now we've got four terms and it can do factor by grouping. If you pick one and negative 15, negative one and positive 15, negative three and five, 
none of those will work with factor by grouping. This special number combination will make this factor by grouping. So you need to know how to do factor by grouping anyway. So you really should be home free at this point. Group, change the last sign of this as a minus, take out a GCF out of the left, take a GCF out of the right, I like this method because you know these two are supposed to be the same right before you put down your answer. And then the other part of my answer would be 3p minus 5. So guess and check is much quicker to me because I can make some good educated guesses. I've done a lot more factoring than you guys have had to do in your lifetime. But even myself, sometimes when I'm just, my brain can't think of the right number combination, I just do this. I know it's gonna take a couple minutes, but I also know it will always work. This method 100% of the time works. Now, if you list out all the A times C stuff and none of them add up to B, then that's how you know it doesn't factor. Whereas in guess and check, you may not know. You may think, I just haven't guessed the right thing yet. Okay, so let me talk about this method two more times. So again, I still recommend you try guess and check. Guess and check never gets quicker and easier to you until you practice it and you do it. And if you can get them with guess and check, that's great. But for our notes, hypothetically, let's say that we can't figure out how to factor this. So we're resorting to the product sum method. So the product part of product sum is reminding us that we need to find two numbers that multiply to A times C which in this question would be positive 10, but add, that's the sum part of the name, to b, which is positive 11. If I can think of two numbers that multiply to this but add up to that, I can change this from three terms to four terms, and specifically four terms that will finish by factor by grouping. So worst case is you write out everything that multiplies to 10. Although really you can stop as soon as you figure out the one that adds to 11. So you could do 1 and 10, negative 1 and negative 10. You could do 2 and 5, negative 2 and negative 5. But realistically, st stop when you find the one that would also add up to B. Your answer is doesn't have a 1 and a 10 in it. This just tells you how to rewrite the question. So instead of saying 11 Bs, we're going to say plus 1b plus 10b. So note, notice, because we make sure that they add up to b, we're not changing the size of our question. We're just changing its appearance. And if you pick the two numbers that meet these two requirements, it will factor by grouping. So again, you're supposed to be able to do factor by grouping anyway. So GCF out of the left, GCF out of the right, and then GCF out of each of these. And then you're done. Okay, so again, I like it because it always works. I like it because it reinforces the factor by grouping, which you don't necessarily get to practice a lot. And I like it because since we do factor by grouping, you know right here, these two are supposed to be the same, and if they're not, then you know something's off. So it's kind of nice to have a red flag that something's wrong before you write down your answer. Okay, one more time. So again, pretend like um, we tried guess and check, and this would be a harder one to do guess and check on, by the way, because a lot of times with guess and check, to get this, it could be 9k times k, but it might also be 3K times 3K. Just depends on the rest of the stuff. So that doubles the amount of things you might have to guess before you can guess it correctly. But I can do product sum just fine. A times C is 189. And sum B is 66. So, if I can think of any two numbers that multiply to 189 but add up to 66, as long as I know what to do with those numbers, I can change this to a factor by grouping question that I at least know just takes a moment to finish. So, off the top of my head, I have no idea, but I can just start off small and then build up. 1 times 189, 
it's not going to work. 2 doesn't go into 189. 3 does. And there may be others, but I'm stopping there because that adds to what I need. Rewrite the question from three terms to four terms. So instead of saying 66 Ks, we're going to say 3 Ks plus 63 Ks. Same thing, just different appearance. Specifically a different appearance where now factor by grouping will finish without any issues. GCF out of the left, um, GCF out of the right, this would be 3K. That would be seven. Oh, 21. Okay. 21 goes into it three times and then one time. And then again, then one of the nice things about this method is you know this 3K plus one better be the same as this 3K plus one. So half of our answer is 3K plus one and half of our answer is the other stuff, 3K plus 21. <clears throat> now, even if you're good at guess and check, this one's a little harder to do. It might actually be faster to do this method. So, Okay, so now that you've seen three of those, is there any points of clarification you'd like to ask? Again, you, you don't ever have to use this method again if you don't want to. If you have a different method you prefer, that's fine. It's just there's a good chance I don't know that method, so I may not be able to help you with that method. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you probably should, because it would make these numbers smaller and it would make it easier to work with. Yeah, and realistically here, I didn't catch that, but I should have. If the question was a factor completely, this still has a GCF. So, if it was factor completely, I should pull out a three out of this as well, and it should probably my answer should look like this instead. Ideally, you do GCF at the start of the question because then you don't forget about it like I almost forgot about it and it makes the rest of the numbers smaller which are easier to work with. You're not going to be dealing with big numbers like 189 and 66. But. Okay, so while we are doing factoring, before you practice a couple of these, on the back page, Just a couple of examples, and again, we're not actually going to apply this until we get to section 5.3, which we will hit the ground running when we come back from Thanksgiving. But when I ask you to factor these, this doesn't mean the same thing as solving the equation, but I want to I want to bring that up so that you remember factoring helps you solve these. So if I factored this, I can see that this is just a difference of two squares. I've got 2x being squared on the left, 1 being squared on the right. Difference of two squares always factors as a plus and a minus. Now, we are going to do the same thing in section 5.3. This question 1 is the same idea. We've got a difference of two squares. The thing being squared on the left is 2 sine x. 2 sine x times 2 sine x gives you 4 sine squared. We have a perfect square on the right. 1 squared is 1. And since it's a difference of 2 squares, you need a plus and a minus. It's the exact same thought process, but instead of x's, they're sine x's. 2x plus 1, 2 sine x plus 1. 2x minus 1, 2 sine x minus 1. If you can factor these, you can factor these. It looks more complicated, but it's the same reasoning. Okay, again, and I'm not going to get too much into this, but remember, and you don't need to do this on any of the other questions, but a lot of times we do factoring to solve equations like this, because if I get two factors, this times this equals zero. If I can make this be zero, then zero times anything is zero. Or if I can make this be zero, zero times anything is zero. So we're going to do that in section 5.3. We will set this equal to zero and solve, set this to equal to zero and solve. And if you remember the unit circle, 
you are pretty close to being done to solving. This is a trigonometric equation. We're trying to figure out what values of x makes this true. So, not anything we're practicing today, but I just wanted to remind you that that is part of it. Okay, question two. This looks like GCF here. They both have an x in common, so I can factor it out. Same exact thing over here. Instead of x's, they're cosine x's. But if they both have a cosine x, we can factor that out as a GCF. Just take note. X's are becoming cosine X's, but the factoring strategy is no different. Question number three looks to have a GCF and a difference of two squares. So sometimes things factor more than once. This looks way more complicated, but it's the same thing. They have a common secant squared. Bless you. You can factor out the GCF, and then if what's left behind is the sum of or the difference of two squares, then we can factor that as well. The thing being squared on the left is secant x. The thing being squared on the right is two. The difference of two squares always factors as a plus and a minus. Compare this answer to this answer. X's became secant x's, and that is the only difference. Okay, two more. So number four, this is a trinomial, but since A is one, that makes the guess and check quite a bit easier. This would factor like this. And this has the same exact structure, but instead of X's, they're cosecant X's. So it's gonna factor the same way. Instead of x plus 2, it's going to be cosecant x plus 2. Instead of x minus 1, it's going to be a cosine x minus 1. If you FOIL this, it goes back to this. If you FOILed this, it would go back to this. It's not any harder, just because it looks harder. Okay, and then just for argument's sake, on the last one, I'll pretend like since a is not 1, it's a little bit harder to factor. I'll pretend like I tried guess and check and I couldn't get it or I thought it was just going to take too long. So I could do A times C is 2, B is 3, 1 times 2 multiplies to this adds to this, change the middle term from 3x to 1x plus 2x, and then do factor by grouping. So I'm trying to point out to you that yes it's more work. Make sure you don't miss this too. Remember this is an understood one. If you don't have that plus one there, you're not getting that second term. But yes, product sum is more work, but if you know the method, you can see how quickly I just did it. It's not, it's not terrible, but. And in fact, even if you feel good at factoring, I really do recommend you at least try this method or some other method occasionally, so that if you struggle, you could, um, have a backup method on um, during class. Now, when you look at this one, if you have trouble connecting it to this, again, you can literally change all the sine x's to x's temporarily, factor it like how I did on the left, and then just say, well, wait, they weren't x's, they were sine x's. You can factor the one on the left, you will be able to factor the one on the right. But again, this is a skill that we need in section 5.3. So this is part of what we're gonna be doing. So we're hoping that a little bit of practice before Thanksgiving makes that go a little bit smoother. Okay, on the next page has 10 factoring questions. Um, you should be considering difference of two squares trinomials, GCF, sum of two squares doesn't factor. Um, you can check all of your answers by foiling. And not required, but I do recommend you try one of the methods like product sum or something instead of guess and check on all of them. 
But if you struggle with any of that, I would be happy to help. But you guys have a large chunk of time here. You've got 45 minutes to get those 10 questions done. So you absolutely should get those finished in class and not have homework. And then I will ask that you turn that into Google Classroom. So I will make that right now. And when you finish with that, uh, that's all I've got for you today. So we'll practice more factoring the next couple classes as well, but we'll also do a little bit of semester test review and stuff. That is now in Google Classroom. So again, I recommend you turn it in as you finish so you don't forget or maybe lose it. And any of these 10 questions you'd like some help on, just let me know. Call me over to your desk or bring it up here to me. But any of them that you're feeling unsure about, multiply your answer together to make sure it goes back to the original question. There's no reason that you should be just hoping that these are correct. And you guys are welcome to check with each other to make sure that it looks like you're getting the same thing as your neighbor if you'd like to, but totally optional.
this one. Yeah. Well, it may not factor. So A times C there is negative 35. So if I start listing everything that multiplies to this, it could be 1 and negative 35, negative 1 and 35. It could, yeah, minus 7, 5, 5 minus 8. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that multiplies to negative 35? Do any of these add up to negative 8? Mm -hmm. Then that question doesn't factor. So just call it prime. That's one nice thing about this method as well is I'm pretty good at guess and check, but the problem with guess and check is sometimes you just don't know if you haven't guessed the right method. If you do product sum and you really consider everything that multiplies to A times C and none of them add up to B, then you know for sure it's not going to factor, no matter what you do. 